Welcome to Coin Retrospectives, short histories of old coins. And here we have the Morgan Dollar, minted from 1878 to 1904, in 1921, and again in 2021. Its name comes from its designer, George T. Morgan, assistant engraver at the Mint, beginning in 1876. But the tale of the Morgan dollar goes back a little farther than that. We'll need to head back to 1873. You know how we do that. Time Machine. 1873 saw the passage of the Fourth Coinage Act, which did a few things like abolish the two-cent piece, the three-cent silver, the half-dime, and the current silver dollar, the ceded liberty, authorizing the trade dollar intended to compete with Mexican dollars in the Orient, restructuring the Mint Office organizational chart, and changing the operational measures of the Assay Commission, which tested the weight and fineness of U.S. coinage. But most critical to our story is the end of free silver. Before this act, silver could be taken to the mint and made into coinage for a small fee. However, when silver's price was low, it became profitable to coin the metal and make a profit off of this policy. Since this would lead to inflation, the act struck it down. Unsurprisingly, this was not popular with the mine owners once the price of silver started to fall. The German Empire had adopted a gold standard and had thrown silver on the market to the tune of 8,000 tons, and then a whole lot of silver had been discovered in mines in Nevada, most notably the Comstock Lode. And thus in 1876, bills were introduced to Congress to resume this practice of free silver. The most popular was the Bland-Allison Act, named after its author and editor, Richard P. Bland and William B. Allison, respectively. The main provision of this bill was that the Mint would purchase between two and four million dollars worth of silver per month. It wasn't free silver, but it was close enough for the Western mining interests. At about the same time, Mint director Henry Linderman was beginning efforts to redesign U.S. coinage. Thus, he hired away one George T. Morgan of Birmingham, England as his new assistant graver off of a recommendation by the Deputy Master of the Royal Mint in London. So what do you do when you've got loads of silver and a brand new hotshot assistant engraver? You get that guy to make new dies for a new coin design, that's what, and Morgan had them completed by 1878. His model for the coin was a local woman, Anna Willess Williams, whose profile Morgan declared to be the most perfect he had ever seen. The very first Morgan dollar was struck at 3.17 p.m. on the 11th of March, 1878, and was given to President Rutherford B. Hayes, who had actually attempted to veto the Bland Allison Act. However, all of this bill passing and whatnot created an issue. The Philadelphia Mint was the only mint equipped to strike this silver, as they were deemed the only mint with the proper equipment to create master dyes. While the Carson City, New Orleans, and San Francisco mints did eventually get their dyes, the Philly Mint had to cease production of most other coinage and work some overtime to catch up with the new quota. This had the side effect of making a lot of early 1880s silver coins with no mint marks, i.e. those minted in Philadelphia, much rarer. What the mine owners were doing here, of course, was profiting off of the treasury at the expense of the public. As silver prices continued to fall throughout the late 1880s, they began to hound Congress to make the treasury buy even more of their silver, and thus was born the Sherman Silver Purchase Act of 1890. This money-grubbing piece of legislation increased the amount of silver that the Treasury had to buy to 4.5 million troy ounces each month. It also made the Treasury mint 2 million silver dollars each month until 1891, and made payment to the mine owners in coin notes, which were redeemable for either gold or silver at the Treasury's discretion. Unfortunately, the Treasury had debts that they could only pay in gold, and with so many silver dollars being minted, the bullion value fell, 
and the Panic of 1893 resulted when citizens realized they might not be able to redeem their notes for gold. President Grover Cleveland called a special session of Congress to repeal the Sherman Silver Purchase Act, and the remaining supply of silver was used to mint other coins until 1898, when Congress mandated the rest of the silver was to be used to mint Morgan dollars. This continued until 1904, when the bullion was exhausted and the Morgan dollar would rest for 17 years. Enter 1918 and World War I. As one of the German government's last-ditch attempts to turn the tide of war in their favor, it began to convince Indian citizens that British banknotes could not be redeemed for silver. This led to British silver beginning to run low, and as such, Nevada Senator Key Pittman introduced the Pittman Act, authorizing the U.S. government to melt silver dollars and sell the bullion to the Brits. 259 million melted silver dollars were eventually sold at the cost of one dollar per troy ounce. The act also required bullion purchases enough to mint more silver dollars, and with the peace dollars not yet ready, the Morgan dollar was brought back for one more year in 1921. This is the only year the OG Morgan was minted at the Denver Mint as it opened in 1906. Morgan himself, now chief engraver, had to create entirely new master dies as the originals were destroyed in 1910. The history of the Morgan dollar doesn't end here though. As Walter Breen puts it, though the Morgan dollar was dead, the corpse wouldn't stay buried. In 1962, an individual walked into a Philadelphia bank and redeemed a silver certificate. In return, they received a Morgan dollar. Which Morgan dollar remains unclear, but it was a rare coin. Eventually leading to folks showing up with wheelbarrows to redeem their silver certificates in hopes of getting more rare Morgan dollars, this uncovered four formerly scarce dates. The 1898-0, 1902-0, 1903-0, and 1904-0. This run on silver eventually led to the end of the silver standard in the United States in 1964. A lot of the Carson City minted Morgans were held back though, and the General Services Administration was provided with $10 million to market and sell the coins in 1970. The GSA conducted mail bid sales totaling $107 million in revenue. Today, these Morgans are collectively known as the GSA Horde, and their marketing increased interest and numismatism by a significant amount. And of course, in celebration of the 100th anniversary, the Morgan was once again minted in 2021. And once again, I'm using a stock photo here as I'm too cheap to buy one. If you are interested in giving me one, I would be very grateful, and you can even put it on your driver's license that you are an official Morgan donor. The Morgan dollar is 90% silver and 10% copper with the mint mark above the words $1 on the reverse. The multitudes of varieties, rarities, VAMs, and other numismatic delights is far too numerous to list here, so I'm just going to go over the funniest one, the Hot Lips variety. In 1888, the New Orleans Mint created a double die obverse that accidentally, among other things, doubled the lips on Lady Liberty, leading to the nickname of Hot Lips. And I do believe that just about covers the history of the Morgan Dollar. If you have enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing. I enjoy talking about old coins, and I hope you've enjoyed learning about old coins. And as always, leave your two cents in the comments and have a great day.